or it could be related to VSC, it could be related to fine arts. Okay, because we know we do not distinguish uh, based on where the where, where, which which domain or which course the person is coming from. We um, you'll be really surprised to know that we have people working from um, psychology honors, history honors in the financial research department, and they have been done exceedingly well. What they had in common is an interest in finance and an interest in the investment which a lot of people uh, come to explore okay so that that picks, that that gives us that for them it's an excellent ground because data analytics as i'll go forward uh, operates in multiple domains we operate in the quantitative side also and fundamental side also and other areas as well right so this 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 group this group gives this financial research groups gives a lot of uh, leverage and um, opportunities for the person to explore the area of finance and uh, in-depth training is provided for the person to understand um, the, the world of investment, how data is used, how processes are management and, and the skills are also built according. Right. So, say, say, say for example, uh, we work uh, another example of a quantitative side of uh, trading will be apart from managing the regular data sets of price and volume and corporate action and mergers and acquisition. There will be a lot of managing a lot of alternative data uh, for the people who uh, might not understand what's an alternative data. It is it's, 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 it's a data which is not available. It is not coming from the regular uh, asset classes of equity and debt. So, so a data, a data for a data related to GPS, a data related to um, consumer spending, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so uh, this is this. These are alternative data sets, and um, this this. So, so people working in financial research work on multiple alternative data sets, and you understand, and then try to say, say for example, if you want to predict the sales of a company using customer spending for their products. Okay, how do you do that? How do you understand that? Right. So uh, there, there's a process around that, um, which which you have been taken, which you are trained, and then developed skills on that. Um, we have uh, the number of skills which you can develop along with uh, finance. Is def well, finance is definitely understanding of asset classes, understanding of financial statements, and then also we build a lot of technical skills also like. Uh, skills around SQL, skills around Python, skills around uh, advanced Excel, skills around VBA, right, and visualization tools like Power Bay. So all, all, all of this becomes a part of a financial research. Right. So, uh, so moving from quantitative style, we also support a lot of uh, all the qualitative side of the uh, strategies, which is fundamental side. Okay. So where um, you've been, you've been working along with a, a particular sector specialist or a um, or, or a company specialist or a, or a, or a, or a particular uh, type of industry specialist right so 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 just to just to uh, revert back quantitative side of investment deals more with um, uh, which is do more with high volume of data where you are required to make sure that you manage large data sets so that when a quantitative model runs the quantitative model model is mostly based on statistics. So uh, when a quantitative model runs on that particular database, it produces high and accurate. So that is one. On the the fundamental side of which is more on the discretionary side, uh, they are these are our traditional methods where we uh, take a particular company, take a particular sector, okay, and then analyze that company and sector to come at a fair valuation. And then decide whether we want to invest or not. That, that's that's the historical way of fundamental, right? So the group supports that as well, right? So you work along with a sector specialist or a company specialist and learn all the process of financial modeling. Okay, till you understand that how do you actually make a full-fledged financial model and and learn how to forecast the data. So these skills also comes along with training, uh, personal handholding, and making sure that you learn. And, and making sure you are upskilled to learn this, like taking you through a course of a financial modeling, okay, or understanding in depth financial um, uh, financial statements. Like I'm sure you would have heard of this um, hidden book scam where they come up with where they analyze the Adani stocks. So uh, hidden book is a forensic accounting where they go in depth. 
Okay, so uh, so that's so so it it is about um, understanding financial statements and it is about uh, um, uh, how to correlate one one financial statement with another financial statement, how to uh, identify what are the factors which relate to a particular industry so that we can predict the sales and the profit of a company. Okay, so that's also become a part of uh, financial research for, for financial research. So among so among the uh, departments mentioned here, okay, financial risk in risk you have fundamental research, data analytics, financial data management, and risk. Currently, we are talking about data analytics department, and this entire uh, profile which I'm talking about, supporting the quantitative style and the fundamental or the qualitative style, this all comes under data analytics or uh, all the all, all the all, all the graduates which we are talking about. right so so this is this is this is where uh, things come for we work very closely with the technology team okay to build um, uh, a lot of validation checks to add a lot of value uh, value value data because managing this huge large data sets is very difficult for a human eye so that's why technology is very plays a very important so you license with the technology team uh, to uh, build automation checks to auto to automatically populate data in the excel sheet so that you don't have to manually punch it and you only uh, handle the part which is more on the analytic side on the analysis so you learn the skill of financial man you learn the skill of data management you learn the skill of data analytics because you build visualization you interpret the data you provide insights on the data you build fundamental skills where you uh, analyze uh, a particular company and build along with that so it's a it's a 360 degree process where on one side you uh, very closely interact with the front office who's the fund manager and then on the other side you um, you uh, you, commu you communicate with the technology team so that's how the entire cycle of investment data investment process works and this is what the exposure and the learning you can get around so you can you you so so because data analytics is a large is a large team so you can uh, you can move around within the team to learn multiple skills okay we provide an opportunity to uh, move within within data analytics so you can you can move from uh, quantitative support to fundamental support fundamental support to more generic support so all these comes under one particular set um, i'll pause here and um, will anyway take questions and then request you to plead to please uh, uh, put on your questions on the uh, interface given uh, thank you so much uh, going to the next I don't I can't hear me. Okay. How about now? Yes, good. Okay, sorry, I was a mute. Okay, so uh, will I spend some time on explaining the financial operations department. So one of the offer today we have is for this department as well. So uh, financial, depart uh, financial operations department, we always, like we used to, uh, we are, we are customized to call it as FinOp, so I'll be talking it as FinOp very often during this uh, during the explanation of this slide. So, uh, in this very simple terms, like as Rajat mentioned, so uh, their team with robust analysis and 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 diligence, and after doing everything, say they decide that we want to trade a stock in in a Hong Kong, and and it can be a pure equity stock. So. The decision is made. A trader would go and and say would implement a trade. What happens after that? The, that's where financial operations department teams come into picture. So uh, our analysts here, like uh, we have a very collaborative team within India and in New York, so which comprises of tax experts, uh, attorneys, uh, legal experts. They have some specific geography uh, experts also. So we discuss it, uh, we have a very robust discussion during this fund launch and we analyze whether it's a, it's a right thing that a Hong Kong trade can be done by an entity, say, established in US or, say, by an entity which is established in India. So that is where financial operations department, in, in short, will come into picture. So anything after being done, uh, after any trades which are being done 
after uh, by finres team after the analysis by fin research team financial operations will start brainstorming and i would not say just after it's also during the ongoing fund launch also so uh, that's first part of the financial operations uh, department job the second part is say a investor comes and say that hey i want to invest 5 million dollars uh, in in the in the shows fund so it's not just as simple as it sound we uh, like our investor relations team analyze the domicile of that investor the risk capacity of that investor the return which he is expecting the time zone over which he is expecting the return etc etc like his his marital status lot of things are very important when an investor invests into particular entity or or the or a fund within the issue so that's where our ir team and other teams uh, analyze and take a right decision that this invest investor can can invest money into into so and so fund so that's that's what we do also in in the financial operations department so specifically our ir team and tax team and financial reporting team work closely and analyze that how and how an individual can be placed and you know to which into which type of strategy he can invest into so that's one of the team which we have in finop department apart from that we also have a private pricing team so this team basically runs valuation models for our private equity investments which are again across the globe and and as rajat mentioned previously that the, this can be any sort of exotic instruments like mortgage backed securities asset backed securities etc etc we also have crm our counterparty relationship management team so we deal with brokers day in day out there are like hundreds of trades which are being executed on a daily basis so it's important that we maintain the margins we we account these trades properly so that and our counter and there is a proper reconciliation between our counterparties and our data so uh, our crm team uh, hands uh, takes a, a very deep dive into it and handles this process for us we have management reporting team so the whole as the name says that this team is responsible to report everything to our senior management on a day to day basis also on a weekly basis monthly basis quarterly basis annual basis etc so our our stake our management is our biggest stakeholder and we give them the insights are very uh, very visually appealing uh, data insights to our senior management for expenses for the pnl etc so that's the job of this team we have financial reporting team we have tax tax team so these teams or the financial reporting team prepares the gap statements for our investors the tax team computes the tax statements for our investors so if you if you look at finop from an overall perspective an investor invest into money so that is the first part of the finop team and finally his his gap statements and tax statements are prepared and issued to him so uh, that's the entire process flow of finop department where an individual come invest his money and and takes his statements and and obviously he gets the returns out of his capital and everything on the on the back end which is which is being done from from a reporting perspective is being done by finop department and uh, obviously like because we are dealing with so much of data and and so much of analysis is is being done so we have a very dedicated analytics and visualization team anv team so this team manages forms information requirements and is responsible for tracking transactions and maintaining our our investors and our consultant consultant databases this team prepares like a very very detailed uh, group wide team wide department wide profit and loss charts expense re- expenses reports the budget reports etc and, and handles this data to our senior management in a, in a very visually appealing uh, uh, tools or software these days there are a lot of it like uh, tableau or power bi etc so that's also being done about finop uh, being done in finop department so uh, all in all this this department has has various teams like ir manar finar tax compliance anb teams so today uh, 
we are offering this entire department's role as a whole. We are not uh, saying that oh, only this particular team is on offer today. We want to meet with candidates. We want to interview them. And we will decide based on the interview and that as and the aspirations of that candidate and and the skill set that which particular team that resource would be most suitable and whether it aligns with our business needs or not. So uh, that that's about the offer today from the FinOp department and that's about the entire department's overview. If you guys have any specific questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer during the end of the presentation. So moving on to the next department. Uh, uh, hi, Shreya. Hey, thanks, Maitri. Um, am I audible okay? Yep. All right. So, hi, everyone. Thank you for staying and um, listening to our presentation today. My name is Shreya, and I'm going to talk about the operations and recruitment team, which is also the team that I am a part of. Um, so, right off the bat, uh, the operations and recruitment team, or the OR team as we call it, uh, supports the eShore research which is an entirely separate entity from the eShaw Co, the hedge fund, the financial business. Now, the eShaw Research, or uh, DESRES, as that is also known as, is the computational biochemistry research company, um, So, which was founded by David Shaw about 20 years ago. So David decided that he wanted to pursue um, pharmaceutical research or computational um, research for advancing um, drug discovery for various types of diseases and to sort of like contribute to the whole pharmaceutical research. And for that, he established the eShore Research. Uh, what we do at eShore Research is that we've developed a number of computational technologies, uh, the first of which is developing a supercomputer called Anton, which is used by our scientists and our researchers to simulate molecules at uh, atomic levels of detail and to basically ultimately discover drugs using all of the molecular dynamic simulation that is done and essentially be able to uh, develop drugs and to be able to find cures and treatments for various diseases. Now, this being uh, a very, very vast and very niche field, uh, this has been uh, the core role that uh, DSHAW Research basically uh, has been um, pursuing for the last 20 years and to support many of the functions that DSHAW Research uh, undertakes. Um, the operations and recruitment team, the OR team, supports um, the whole group uh, for a number of uh, activities, the first of which being sourcing and recruiting. Um, our main goal is to sort of design and implement customized sourcing strategies which means that we want to find people who are able to build um, such hardware, software to be able to research um, drugs via computational techniques, which also means that we are going to find people who are able to research these um, computational uh, elements in a, in, a, in a very highly advanced manner. These are all niche researchers, niche hardware engineers and scientists. Uh, which means that finding them is just a very complicated and a very thorough job, which requires a lot of uh, interesting and innovative uh, techniques and strategies. And in addition to which, we, our team also handles the entire end-to-end -end recruitment infrastructure and candidate life cycles, right from finding these people to reaching out to them, to handling their materials and uh, interacting with our front-end team, the hiring managers, management of interviews, uh, all of that is done by uh, the operations and recruitment team. In addition to just managing the life cycle of these candidates, we also uh, contribute to a lot of career affairs, research talks, um, and any and all means of attracting, finding, and uh, executing strategies to be able to find the the primary, uh, you know, uh, scientists and hardware engineers in their fields. Um, the next thing that we do is also sort of like an extension of that function, which is to manage the firm's outreach, branding, and advertising efforts, which essentially means that we handle all arenas of advertising and marketing for the uh, Destress group. Um, this includes 
um, global advertising and marketing efforts. We also make sure that we are analyzing uh, which would be our best outreach and diversity efforts. We make sure that we are handling and advertising and attracting the kind of talent across different sort of uh, groups uh, globally. Um, we not only ensure that we are reaching out to the best kind of the target groups that we want to attract talent from, but we also make sure that this is uh, reviewed and we are able to do this on large budgets, but through a lot of analysis of the work that we do, that is basically collecting data, being able to review this data uh, in, a, in a timely manner, which means that we also perform a lot of statistic analysis and we also make sure that we are reviewing the data that um, is able to ultimately convert to a lot of um, strong uh, advertising and uh, ultimately attracting and branding the group really well. And so this trend tracking and this sort of like uh, 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 like statistical anal analysis that we do is for managing our budgets on advertising and being able to also automate a lot of processes and managing infrastructure for all these functions is something that we handle on a day-to-day -day basis. This means that we not only while handling like a large number of candidate or recruiting data, we also handle a large number of um, scientific data a large uh, number of uh, applications from people uh, relating to our recruiting activities. All of these are very important reports that help the whole group determine where our efforts are being spent. And this also uh, is done very regularly by the team, um, requires a lot of um, understanding of large data and uh, large data. We are we, over the years. We've also converted a lot of our manual efforts into automated processes, which requires some amount of scripting. So a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity within the team, which has led to um, making processes faster for us to be able to target a large market, for us to be able to sort of like attract talent from places that we were uh, that that have historically been sort of like difficult for us to reach out to, but through our um, efforts at automating processes and being able to you know, uh, handle a larger number of data through what our team does has been really successful, um, not just in recruiting, but also in branding and making uh, Tesla's a, a very known name um, across the globe. And in addition to all our recruiting efforts, uh, we also uh, interact very uh, frequently with our scientists and our engineers, and we also support their um, functions by helping them track market uh, like uh, the latest going on, goings on in the market, which means that we help uh, analyze the latest scientific research. We help them um, review scientific publications. We present this data regularly, sometimes on a monthly, bi-monthly basis. Uh, we uh, not just collate, we also um, analyze, present this data in uh, uh, fact in, in manners which is has been strongly contributing to um, advancing the efforts uh, on various drug discovery projects, on various uh, supercomputer building projects. Um, so across uh, the technical teams also, the OR team has essentially uh, contributed very regularly over the last decade or so in advancing um, scientific research and uh, technological developments. And uh, our Desra is essentially not just uh, does in-house research, but we're also um, we collaborate with uh, external researchers. We provide platforms, we provide data for scientific research um, to the community um, through and through all of these efforts. We basically have been able to contribute to many many projects outside of the of the work directly done by Desra. A lot of uh, uh, the work that op the operations and recruitment team does is to track this um, uh, work that's being done outside of test rest to be able to uh, uh, review the kind of uh, uh, the kind of mm -hmm. uh, work that the kind of efforts that have been done by other groups, other labs, other I'm researchers actually, yeah, actually out of from to, by uh, using uh, the resources uh, provided by test rest. Uh, a lot of this effort is being tracked by the operations and recruitment team. Uh, under corporate development efforts and 
we again analyze a lot of this data, which is directly even presented to David. And uh, this is sort of like um, a reflection of, uh, you know, the kind of impact that Tisha research has had um, uh, in the industry. So a lot of this uh, data tracking, this review of um, resources provided by the Tisha research is very analytical, is a high level review of the impact that we would have had our resources being useful in various um, you know, areas of the industry. And uh, that's basically a, a quick snapshot of the type of work that the, uh, that the operations and recruitment team does to support uh, the Isha research. Um, overall, our, uh, we are very collaborative, not just with our counterparts um, who handle the front end work, um, in terms of recruitment, but we also interact very closely and work very closely with the scientists and um, the engineers and in the Shaw research. Um, it's while it's a small uh, group, it's very niche. The kind of work that we do is very interesting. It's very dynamic. And over the years, we've uh, grown really rapidly. And that's been very exciting for the team over here. We're about 25 people at this point, And um, what uh, the team is a very diverse team over here um, in the Hyderabad office. We don't really, in terms of requirements from candidates, we're open to people from any background, any kind of uh, educational qualifications. We are interested primarily in people who would be like, you know, uh, would be inclined to taking up, uh, like would be inclined to taking up some amount of scientific affinity, uh, would have some sort of like inclination towards uh, recruiting and would be able to sort of contribute innovatively towards uh, furthering our efforts and reviewing uh, data, being able to provide statistical and analytical support to what the team does. But over and above that, it's a very diverse team in terms of backgrounds and in terms of like educational qualifications. There's uh, ample training that we provide here. We prepare people to be able to interact when, uh, with scientific data, if not um, truly be experts at it. But uh, there's immense support provided here, and it's a very diverse and interesting uh, like sort of an opportunity. So happy to take any questions if there are uh, in the Q&A box and at the end of the session. And back to you, Maitri. That's all. From me. Thanks, Shreya. All right, so moving on to the next slide. Today, what are we expecting uh, out of these groups? So I think most of my colleagues have mentioned it several times that we are not expecting people from any particular background or, or, or any particular degree or something. We want people who are committed, like who have exceptional analytical skills, who have, who have a very comprehensive approach to problem solving, who are who can be a good team player and, and last but not the least who are very committed and to work with ethical standards this is what we are looking for so we have mentioned it enough of times in respective view heads uh, by respective view uh, presenters also that uh, no degree no background uh, is is a bar we just want people to uh, uh, to be good at at what they are presenting or like they they are mentioning it on their resumes and and that's it and then your interview will be driven by that so uh, uh just come with the full potential and and like with your core strengths and give a meaningful experience to to the to this offer so i think that's what we are looking for uh the next slide <clears throat> uh We'll, we'll show a few slides and, and explain, like we'll give you a glimpse of what the culture at DISHA is about. So uh, we value our people and their extraordinary work. We we go to great lengths. Uh, uh, Shubham, you can go to the next slide. So we go to the great lengths to invest in our people and and we encourage a very collaborative environment here. We, we want our people to be satisfied. They are, we want them to, to be satisfied with their work, they are always challenged, and and our culture goes beyond workspaces and benefits. Like it, it's at heart. Uh, this is like values. We value like integrity and accountability, and that is what our people are bonded with, and and that's what defines our culture. So, with the next few slides, we'll show you how 
how Disho is not just invested into uh, into its people by just giving them work, but what are the other things we offer? Like how do people enjoy their working day with Disho? So uh, moving on to the next slide, Shubham. So yeah, in front of you are seeing like what is our social calendar, like what all things we have for our employees to keep them engaged and and have a healthy work and uh, life balance so we have different hobby groups like uh, music dance quizzing dramatics reading sports etc there's a lot of uh the firm supports these clubs by giving them opportunities to meet conduct workshop uh, perform internally and participate and, and also conduct some competitions and shows for them one of the important thing is like we are very serious in giving back to the community, to the society. So the firm supports a lot of uh, social causes like through our CSR, like Corporate Social Responsibility Club, which is a grassroots program run by, by our staff. Hello, hello. So this club promotes community engagement, sparks informed conversation hello, hello, and, hello. Social, and, and foster social consciousness through various activities, like again, we do a lot of workshops, hello, hello, community hello. visits, uh, volunteering opportunities and, and fundraisers. So uh, we and the firm also matches employees charitable uh, giving uh, in, in various other uh, like in unfortunate events which happen. And and we make this financial contribution to, to this nonprofit organization and, and give our best to help to the society or community and, and do our best there. Uh, as I mentioned, so we we love uh, that our, our employees are engaged in their health and wellness, uh, well-being also. So we have a lot of on fitness sessions like yoga, Zumba, uh, meditation workshops, etc. So it's not just work, but apart from work, we also uh, encourage employees to learn beyond work. So we have a lot of competitions which are like uh, coding competitions, hackathons, and, and where employees from different departments come together, explore a new technology or a product and, and present it to the to the leaders and and some of them win the competition with a with a very good goodies and, and prizes. So it's not just work, but a lot of other exciting things which will give our employees enough motivation and an encouragement on the on, on their day-to-day -day work a uh, quick look at our Hyderabad office so it's, it's a beautiful office as you see we have <coughs> basketball court a multi multi court as we call it uh, cool hangout zones coffee uh, coffee shop sort of like a hang a coffee zones uh cricket net etc so there's a lot in the office uh moving on to this i think we are running on time so i'll quickly go on to the very important slide which is which is a firm's focus on equity and inclusion and which is called like di diversity inclusion equity so we want to ensure that we are very dedicated and very serious about this like we want that all the employees feel welcome and empowered to do their best. Like we would never discriminate anyone on on account of any any other parameter. Like for us, we think that diversity, equity, and inclusion is at the forefront of our organization goals. So Dijo is committed in in building a firm that better reflects the diversity of the world in which we live in. So diversity is like making sure that we have a right composition of of diversified people uh, from from the different backgrounds we have equity where making sure that everyone has a fair chance to succeed in terms of work allocation in terms of promotions benefits etc so that is very important and an inclusion like where we where we support and foster a welcoming work environment which is very important that an employee feels inclusive <laughs> and will never feel that oh i don't belong to this group or culture or this this language or no no barrier as such so we are very 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 committed to dni so at Disho, we are strong advocates of diverse workforce and we foster an inclusive and egalitarian culture where every individual have a sense of belonging and we value it and we respect it so and our leadership is also very compassionate and very serious about about this uh, particular area 
and we can't speak like I, we can go on talking about this forever but our next slide will show how many like what are the efforts we take during the year so that our firm is is doing enough on the dei front so in terms of hiring and internship we have different internship programs we have so many other inclusive benefits so this is how we select people uh, like we seek out talented people from diverse background across the colleges like diff- in various parts of the country so our like this is a sen fellowship program is for women students and wherever uh, women coders come together for a three day collaborative program there are a lot of other programs like finspire empower uh, recommends etc so uh, this lot which is basically covering the dei part of the firm and apart from that we have very inclusive policies and benefits like we review our policies and benefits in our in efforts to make them best in class and which is very inclusive <clears throat> we have lot of affinity and support groups so the women's affinity group we have which which aims to connect inspire and, and empower women employee and and foster an inclusive work environment we also have lg lgbtq support group which aims to bring together interested allies to brainstorm explore and curate programs and events that can increase awareness and promote community and relationship which is good for for the people who belong to this community so we don't want to discriminate anyone on on account of anything so that is that is what uh, in nutshell about the firm's the dei effort which happens throughout the year uh moving on to the next slide so the most important slide is the about the compensation breakout uh, compensation and benefits so uh disha today for this role is offering uh ashokam you can go to the next slide so we have a base salary of 12 lakhs 25000 the variable benefit like as you call bonus will will range from minimum 1.5 lakhs to maximum 2 lakhs it can it can vary also but when we say minimum so 1.5 is fixed like that lower amount is guaranteed the higher amount is is obviously dependent on your performance that's why that variable is also called like performance bonus you will get a re- relocation benefit also the re- the relocation on based on the reimbursement on actual bill so apart from that the other benefits include like your medical insurance accident insurance life insurance we have like a super cafeteria super cafeteria with a uh, lot of food options so you have like breakfast lunch snacks apart from that uh, we also provide like trainings and and other employee benefits relocation allowance as i mentioned that's about that's up to 1.25 lakhs joining bonus is 1.5 lakhs so your total compensation package will be minimum 21 lakhs to like maximum i would not say but like still it is like 21. 50 21 lakhs 50000 so so that's about the compensation uh happy to answer if you have any questions at the end of the presentation uh so yeah i think we are done so that was the last slide and and open for question and answers thank you so much maitri um thank you to all our presenters today All right. Now we'll just quickly take um some of the questions that we have in the Q&A section and the ones applicable to all the PUs I will throw those questions open to the entire panel. Um to begin with we see a lot of uh questions around the assessment and the pattern of testing going forward. So very quickly I'm just going to cover a little bit of a gist of what you can expect forward in the recruitment process. Um now as you have all as you must have all registered on our website um you would have received an email from us to register for the testing process now the testing process as you know will be hosted on 18th of um the month and um while you register for this a particular testing process you will come across a field wherein you have to put down your preferences of profiles now as you know we have four profiles on offer and you can apply for for any or all of them now um even though you'll be applying for multiple prof- uh, profiles if you choose to you will have to put down your 
preferences in the registration form now as a practice what we do is uh, we take your first preference uh, if the eligibility criteria matches and based on that first preference we will schedule your assessment accordingly now in terms of the assessment uh, like i mentioned your assessment will be on the 18th of march um the assessment will be a one hour long aptitude test um which will be of mcq nature now uh, depending on the uh, business or the role that you have applied for and given your first preference for the test may vary slightly in terms of the subjects that you are tested on however the uh, basic gist of it being an aptitude mcq format test will remain the same now for profiles like or desres fin financial research and financial operations you can expect sections like logical reasoning and data interpretation in your uh, online assessment however uh, this pattern will uh, change a little bit when we talk about the efotec profile that you apply for so in the efotech related assessment you will have a section on logical reasoning a little bit of quant uh, quantitative ability and uh, this they will also assess your basic technical knowledge so that is all about the assessment uh, please note that the mcq test or the online assessment will have negative marking and hence please be mindful while attempting the test now for three of the four profiles which is financial research financial operations and or desres uh, this mcq assessment will immediately be followed by another um, another form of assessment should you clear the internal cut off that we have so if you do clear the internal cut off you will immediately be redirected to a section that we call the asynchronous interviews now what exactly is an asynchronous interview it is a virtual format of interviews wherein you will see a a question flashing on your screen you will get a few seconds to think about your answer and uh, after that in a stipulated time period you will have to record your answer via audio as well as video so similarly you will receive three such questions and the nature of these questions would be more to assess how well you can communicate your ideas your opinions and the experiences you have had so far so this is the basic format of the assessment which you can expect on the 18th itself now once the assessment is over and complete we will be assessing the results of uh, the assessment as well as the asynchronous interviews and accordingly we will get in touch with selected students to host interviews for you we will get in touch with you on a one on one basis and uh, schedule your interviews as and when required uh, considering the convenience of the panel as well as your availability so uh, in terms of timelines what you can expect is um, the interviews may be uh, may start being scheduled somewhere towards the end of march or beginning of april <laughs> so this is the timeline that we'll follow uh, in terms of number of interviews which is another uh, frequent frequent question that we've uh, seen uh, there could be depending on the business that you have applied to and depending on your interaction with each of the uh, panelists during your um during your interviews there may be um there may be on average two to three rounds of interviews um so this is the format um all right uh okay so what we would like to do now is take a take up a few more questions uh i i'm sure all of uh, a few of our panelists at least covered this section in their um explanation of the business slides and the requirements however there seems to be a little bit of uh, apprehension around the fact that there are candidates who are applying from various uh, backgrounds and specifically for the financial profiles or the tech profile uh, how would they be able to equip themselves in order to clear the assessment as well as the interview so what kind of elements would you all be looking at in terms of consideration so i'd like to open the floor with perhaps uh, rajat if you would like to take this first for finres yeah uh, thank you for the question uh, maybe i'll start with so as 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 i told that financial research i say in a nutshell it's it's a financial 
Okay. Um, however, uh, we believe that uh, early recognition of talent and uh, enthusiasm and interest to do something can uh, make you do anything what you want and make you scale any heights. And we go with that philosophy. So, you know, whatever you have done till now in terms of your course, your extracurriculars, any extra courses you have done along with um, your regular BCom, BSc, uh, BA, economics, or any arts, fine arts course, right? We, 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 what we look into it that how in depth you have gone, the thoroughness in that, and whatever you have mentioned in the resume, uh, how how in depth you have gone to understand and make an effort to learn things in depth, because that is what we will be looking for in the uh, in the profile, in, in, in whoever joins us in the profile. So, an ability to scale your work, an ability to uh, expand your thought horizon in suppose you have done a project on uh, or, or you have done a prior internship or you have done a, a, a suspend or a dissertation or whatever right so whether uh, industry analysis or a market survey or a statistics or anything right so did you understood the problem well how did you uh, how did you analytically approach to so find a solution for that right so a mature and a, 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 a mature thought process. Okay, this is what we look forward to. Uh, in terms of your education, whatever subjects you have studied, okay, whether it is on the finance or account side, or it is on the general management side, maybe a strategic management or a portfolio management or English or history or whatever it is. Okay, are you able to answer questions on that, whatever they've been asked to? Okay, so so this is what we are looking forward to. So if it is if you have done a finance course, a basics of finance will be helpful, so that we can understand that yes, you can uh, work around things. Okay, um, also it's been told by in the uh, in the you know, presentation um, uh, analytical and problem solving skills. Yes, that's what we look forward to, and that and. Practically, I'm just opening the question paper for you. So, if you have done a if you have done a project, uh, we'll definitely ask you on the problems you have faced. We'll ask you the situations you have faced and how did you came up with the solution. Okay, so so problem solving solution ability to execute uh, and come to a solution is very very important, right? Whatever subjects you have done, basics is very important, right? So that general awareness will definitely look into it because uh, we look for people who are well read or well aware. Okay, so yeah, that's what it is. I'll pass it on to my other uh, colleagues. Well, I agree 100% with Rajat. So uh, for even financial operations department, uh, no degree, like, like we are not specific to any, any background, mm -hmm. but whatever Rajat said, that's exactly what we are looking for for our department as well. Uh, Shreya Nishant, would you like to take this up for ORDS risk? Sure, I think I'll let Shreya answer this. I think like some of which uh, I covered earlier that we don't really have any specific requirements or any kind of like qualifiers. So uh, whatever is needed, as long as you're open to learning and you can develop some affinity to sciences, etc. That's all we need. Most of our team members come from a variety of backgrounds and we basically provide all the training, all the learning that you need um, on the job. So nothing really required. Sure. Thank you, Shreya. Uh, Maruti? Yeah, I think I kind of already covered this when I was uh, presenting the FFX slide. Yeah. We, we are really looking forward to have only two skills from people, right? One, um, problem solving and analytical skills. There's a broad area and maybe an abstract word to use, but in general sense, I think, like I said, I think just be good at simple quantitative skills, uh, bring in, you know, good communication skills because you, a part of your role, you'll have to communicate, coordinate, collaborate, license with a lot of people. Um, and thirdly, I think, uh, um, 
good fundamentals on computer science subjects and it doesn't matter which subject you are good at it can be unix it can be java c++ whatever it is uh, just be good at at least one subject uh, be strong at the fundamentals and if you can bring in a good intersection of these three skills like you'll get hurt all right wonderful um next uh, we see a lot of questions around um changing preferences so um i'll take this up so a lot of you have asked that you have already registered and put down your preferences and if those can be changed unfortunately that wouldn't be uh something we would be able to accommodate at this point um we would request you to go forward with the preference you have put down and give the assessment and we can take a call on the candidate chat at a later point um all right now um there are a lot of questions also um revolving around the mode of work um or working that we are engaged in right now whether we work from home uh, whether we work in a hybrid manner if the candidates are selected um when they join us will they be joining us on a permanent in person manner a hybrid model or a work from home permanent model so again um maybe we could i i request the panel to take this up i can i can start with synops so uh, this sure. role is specifically for hyderabad location and overall the we have like firm policy uh tuesday wednesday thursday uh, like mandatory in office and monday to friday uh, an optional work from home so that's what we'll follow for fenop financial operations department thank you maitri uh, rajat would you like to take on for finres so uh, i mean this this uh, for for finres this role is primarily for hyderabad okay um, and yes same hybrid policy is for wide so uh, monday and friday you can work from home rest you can uh, definitely um, you have to come to office um, and uh, yeah that's that's it wonderful maruti for efotech yeah it's the same policy right i think uh, the hybrid work the hybrid policy is applies across the firm across the verticals uh, <laughs> from the location point of view again we are looking primarily for hyderabad but uh, definitely open for uh, uh delhi and uh, bangalore as well um i think in addition to uh, the hybrid work policy i think you can choose to kind of work from home for 12 days in an uh, year i guess uh, apart from that i think if you want to work more from home you know you need to just talk to your manager and get it done but otherwise i think just to say that this is pretty flexible uh, and the firm is pretty flexible depending on case to case basis so we are kind of open to allowing people to work from home uh, as and when needed Right. Uh, Nishant Shreya. Yeah, I think uh, same in terms of work from office days are going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But we are only uh, looking for hiring someone for the Hyderabad office. We are not in the Delhi or the Bangalore offices. So this is restricted to the Hyde office for the OR role. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, All right I think that brings us to the end I think there's one more question that we can take up um a lot of you have asked us uh, when will you all get the link for the testing so as i mentioned the test would be held on 18th if you have registered uh, you'll be also given a choice of which slot you want to give your test in uh, your testing credentials which include the test link as well as your user id and password will be shared with you over email 1 hour before your test so you can keep an eye on your email roughly an hour before your uh, your selected time slot and you should be able to get your credentials that time All right that covers um uh, most of the questions we had now before we wrap up this session i will quickly take a moment to thank our entire panel for this evening um thank you to each and every one of you i'm sure our attendees have learned a lot about the organization the roles on offer and our culture in general um to our attendees we wish you all the very best um for the recruitment process going forward we hope to interact with you very soon during this recruitment process and look forward to working with some of you on floor very soon thank you for joining in this weekend thank you everyone have a wonderful evening ahead
Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Best. Thank you all. All the best.